even know where you came from. Aren't you from the gutter? Aren't you a Bronx bitch from the gutter, bro? Aren't you from the gutter, bro? So the audacity for somebody that said that they was in the mall looking for a job, jobs anywhere, they was about to crash out. They needed a job ASAP before you blew up. And you're going to go and try to call somebody a bum? With the way you act, with the way you move, you are a soulless individual. You are really demonic. You have a very demonic vibe to you, especially with the way I was seeing you every day, the way you mope around and you just like... If your makeup artist is not bringing that wing and making it pick up your eye, you are dead. You really look dead. You really look dead. And I'm going to keep it a bean with you. This prayer because I'm trying to show up for ice spice like I'm Christian. Nah, I'm just yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna just say this prayer so the Lord can protect us as we go through the rest of the night and the rest of our careers. Right. You know what I'm saying? So everybody hold hands. Hold hands, hold hands. Lord, thank you so much for bringing this amazing group together right now with this amazing stream and our amazing teams, Lord. We are all from the same place and we are all trying to get to the same place, which is the top end. We are, we all want to experience different things in our lives, chat. So thank you so much for bringing all of us together. And I pray that you allow us to grow on other people, on each other. And I pray that you allow us to reach any measures in this life and just watch over us daily. You bless us. You allow us to bless other people with our work and our amazing craft. And you help us enjoy this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, we need a bottle of rosé. Listen, shout out to all my Don Julio. What the fuck? <gasps> I just bought oh. this shit. Oh. I just bought this shit. Whose tea is that? You were sitting right there, too. You Jeez. knocked it over. How I knocked it over? Oh. oh. There's a lot going on. Yes, there is so much going on. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Before I jump right in, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss any of my new uploads, okay? So, Ice Spice is being exposed by an independent artist named Cleo Trapper. If you don't know who Ice Spice is, because I didn't know who she was until months and months and months ago, when Candace Owens made a video about a song called Fart? You ain't nothing but a fart? Wait, you ain't even a fart? Something like that. And I was in disbelief because certain artists I just don't follow. I don't pay attention to. Artists like Sexy Red, Ice Spice, they both in the same boat. I believe that they are industry plants. They are being pushed by these people who control the music industry. Yesterday, I saw a video of Ice Spice bugging out when Ty Little was praying. Now, Ty Little is the one whose sister sexually assaulted the actor from Power Online. Remember that? Michael, I forgot his name. And that was, what, two months ago? In this clip, you see Ty Little is praying and you see Ice Spice is bugging. She's not comfortable. She's doing everything but concentrating. She is laughing. She is smiling. She is just not comfortable. When you are possessed, the name of the Lord will bother you. Praying will be a problem. Being in church will be a problem because the demon can't take the name of the Lord. You see, demons are afraid of the name of Jesus. That's why I Spice could not stay put. She was just doing all these things. And she also threw up the devil's horns, the Baphomet sign, the same sign that she did at the Super Bowl when she was with Taylor Swift. Remember that? Evil is not hiding anymore. They don't even care. It's all in your face. They don't care. Now, I'm going to play the video of Cleo Trapper exposing who Ice Spice truly is, a demonic, soulless control puppet. It's a long video. It's six parts, but you guys, it's really, really, really good. She exposed, she, she explained everything, and Ice Spice even tried to gaslight her through text. That gaslighting was so terrible. Ice Spice is not a good person. She is evil. So you guys check out this video and I'll see you in the next one. Y'all, it's your girl Cleo. Um, so y'all know me. 
I've always been vocal about everything, about literally everything. Nobody can shut me up. Nobody can silence me. <laughs> like, was you silenced or was you silenced? Okay, and nobody's going to do that to me. This video isn't to bash anyone. This is for me to speak on my experience and what I went through. And I want my fans to learn from this. My fans, my followers, my supporters, my future fans, followers, supporters. You don't even have to like me. I want y'all to literally take this situation that I'm about to break down to y'all and be inspired by it. And understand that no matter what the opportunity is, nobody should make you feel less than or make you feel like shit because they gave you an opportunity. It does not matter. It does not give a door, a open way for somebody to try to humiliate you or try to make you feel less than. And I feel as though being such a confident black woman, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't, look, I'm ashy as fuck as a black woman. <laughs> I didn't even want to, like, start tearing, okay? Anyways, as a black woman, a confident one who knows exactly who she is and exactly what she wants in this world, people are so intimidated by it. And it's either you're intimidated and scared of it or you love it and you just, you just love it. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, I was around somebody who was clearly intimidated by me like and just who I am as a person and at first it might have been something that they liked but as you can see I only go up and I could be seen as a threat to somebody who clearly isn't confident I can fall out with a friend over miscommunications misunderstandings that's okay. You know, we'll, we can work it out, honestly. It's not something that is like, has to end everything. You know what I'm saying? But you actually have one time to show me that you are jealous, intimidated, untrustworthy, fake, disloyal, and genuine, manipulative, and calculated. And I promise you that will be the last time you ever play with me. Now I will break down how it ended. And for a lot of people that don't know, me and Ice did not grow up together. That is not my childhood friend. I met her two years ago. Before she blew up, I was very supportive of her. Before she even blew up, I was somebody that genuinely liked her. I was like, this girl is so cute. I seen her video on my Explore. She didn't even drop her viral song yet. And I was so supportive of her. Now, anyways, I'm just going to tell the story because you guys deserve to know. You guys deserve to know why we are not friends anymore because a lot of y'all loved us being together. You guys do deserve to know why we're not friends. Y'all do deserve to know who y'all are so obsessed with. Y'all love her so much. Y'all deserve to know who that girl is as an actual human being. As an actual human being. Looks. Looks. All of that, as a human being at your soul, y'all deserve to know. So the ending of July, I get a call from Ice um, very early in the morning. Cleo, come on tour with me. I miss you. Come. And I'm just like, girl, I'm not about to come on tour with you and watch you perform all month. Like, I got a nigga. <laughs> I got stuff that I could be doing. I could be getting money. I have opportunities. In New York, I have brand deals, I have things that I need to focus on. So for me to travel all over the United States with you to watch you perform, kind of crazy. She's like, no, I want you to perform. And I gag. You want me to perform? She ain't never, ever, ever, ever brought me out on stage. I was like, oh, wait. Okay, like, I guess this girl, and in my head, this is what I'm thinking. I'm like, I guess she's really trying to make up for that fake shit that got exposed, like, a month ago like she's really trying to like you know be a actual friend because that shit was weird as fuck 
And I checked her about that shit. And even for her to apologize was like pulling teeth. Like, girl, you got caught calling your friend jealous for no reason. And her excuse was that I didn't speak up when I was asked if she was Nigerian. Like, girl, I met you, I met you a month before that video. I didn't even know you was Nigerian. So that was kind of weird to me, too, that she was upset at me for not knowing if she was Nigerian. And she said that you could have at least said I was black. Like, girl, I didn't even know you. Am I your PR? Am I supposed to be clearing up every time somebody's asking about you being black or Nigerian? Like, that's not, that's not my role. And I don't even know you. And I don't even know you. So I was so confused. Anyways, we moved back. Anyways, after that situation that had happened um, with her ex-best friend exposing her for calling, like, just about everybody jealous, that was kind of, like, sick, too, because why do you think everybody's jealous of you? She literally tried to link me being jealous of her with that interview of me not knowing if she was Nigerian. And I'm just like, girl, are you crazy? And she never said that she felt the way. And it was just like, I didn't even know that she was mad at me. She's just in messages talking about me. So she tells me, like, I think everybody's jealous of me. Don't take offense into it. I say that about everybody. I'd say that everybody's jealous of me. I even say that about my mom. Uh, like, that's kind of sick. But okay. Like, okay. Fast forward, though, I started thinking that a lot of the things that Ice was doing was calculated. Like, even the thing after her best friend exposing her, it was like, oh, like, let's go to the basketball game. Come with me to this basketball game. I'm thinking, like, oh, she just wants me to come to come with her to a basketball game. Like, maybe she's trying to make it up. I don't know why I kept thinking, like, she was trying to make it up for being, like, caught being fake. But it was just, like, even the basketball game, it was, like, one day later, she's, like, dropping a song. It's like every time she's like inviting me out because we never chilled on some like chill shit, bro. Like it was never like just some chill. It was always like in the blogs the next day and the song is dropping too. So it was like, what? This girl kind of uses me for her rollouts. So I'm just like, um, okay. When the tour thing came out, I'm like, oh, she's actually trying to like give me something now. Like, okay, okay. She's trying to make it up. She's trying to work. She's trying to be an actual good friend. I made a flyer announcing that I was going to be coming on tour with her. It did not even get reposted. It didn't even get a comment or a like, and she was tagged in it. Um, the bill, it didn't even have my name on it. Like, just about nobody knew I was coming on tour. It was like a special guest. Like, she didn't even, like, shine any sort of, like, her own light on me. It was, like, kind of, like, all me, like... I want my things to come out. Like, she didn't really try to, like, mesh me in with her actual fan base or try to, like, put her fan base onto me. Very calculated, you know? It was just given, like, oh, let's, let's, you know, let Cleo eat, but we gonna give her crumbs. Like, we gonna shine light on her, but let's dim it. You know what I'm saying? It just gave that so much. Online says the show starts at 8. It would even say 9 sometimes. And guess what time I was going on? At 7.30, 7.45. I was going on before the show starts. So that was kind of weird in itself. I had no idea what to expect going on tour. I had no idea until I got on tour and started seeing certain things. And I'm just like, wait, why don't I have that? I didn't have a room. I was told I was going to be with her, but I didn't have a room. No room for me backstage at all. I was in her dressing room. I didn't have no writer. I was with her. And before I came on tour, I asked her, what were the things that I was going to have to pay for? Because this is so last minute. Like, you're only giving me one day to prepare. Like, it's July 30 something and we going on tour August 1st. Like, girl, like literally one day. So I'm just like, what do I have to pay for? Nothing. You're going to be with me. You're good. You're going to be with me. So I was like, okay, everything is handled. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna make the best out of it. I'm gonna make the absolute best out of it. I don't have no dances or nothing. I'm just gonna go out there and do what I can do. So that's that. I'll tell y'all how the tour went now. Please keep in mind that before I went on tour, I had one day to prepare, one single day. Um, everything was a rush, but you know, I'm looking at this like, okay, this is gonna be good for me. And again, did not have any, I didn't know what to expect. This is my first tour. Like, 
I wasn't allowed to bring anybody. She said if I brought anybody, I was going to have to pay for their hotel and transportation. I'm just like, girl, I didn't even have time to prepare for this. Like, I only got one day. Like, you feel me? Like, you, you, it's damn near like me putting everything, like putting my needs to the side to, like, to accomplish something. I have things to pay for for myself as an independent artist. So, of course, I'm thinking, like, of ways to not come too much out of pocket for a tour that doesn't even have me on the bill. Like, I'm not even on the lineup, like, okay? Anyways, let's go into how the tour went. So, first couple of days was cute. We went to Philly, and this is when things go left now. Um, yeah, we're in a hotel room. We're not sure if we're gonna, like, bring our bags to the venue. Because I guess, like, we were going to come back to the hotel. But she told me, don't leave your bags at the venue. You might need some. You Don't leave your bags at the hotel. You might need something in it. And I was like, okay, I'll bring it. Her security, who brings all her bags, she has, like, 10 bags. He brought my bag. Brought the bags down. And now we're at the venue, and I do need something in the suitcase. Like, I had a wardrobe malfunction. Like, she said I probably would have. That's that she cursed me, okay? Because now I do have a wardrobe malfunction. Um, so I'm like, oh, how can I get the bag? She's like, tell the security to get it for you. I go to the security. I'm like, can you get my bag out the, out the trunk? Because I have no idea where the trunk is, where the car went. We just came into the venue. Like, we artists. We working. Whatever. Um, he goes. He gets the bag. Brings it upstairs. I changed, da 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 end of the show. I put my bag next to her 10 bags and the big black dresser. And, yeah, I'm thinking everything is going to be moved but like back into the truck and we could, you know, leave, go back to the hotel. Um, I turned around and my bag is still there. My bag was still there. All her bags was gone. I'm just like, why would somebody just leave my bag? Like, I'm like, I asked the security, I'm like, can you take my bag? He said no. I was like, what the fuck? What's going on? He brought all her bags. He said, okay. I'm like, can I pay somebody to bring my bags down? Because I didn't want to bring the bags down. Why would I want to bring the bags down? I'm just a girl. So I'm asking around nobody's word. So I'm like, all right, let me bring the bags. I'm tight though. I'm tight. Like, I'm not used to this stuff. Like, what the fuck? I just put I'm just supposed to be performing. Need I remind you, I'm not even allowed to bring somebody on tour with me. So I didn't really have anybody helping me. It was just me. Um, but I feel like she could have simply said to the security, like, take Cleo's bag. Don't forget Cleo's bag. But I got a sense that she just wanted me to struggle. And that's kind of fucked up as, like, a friend. Like, so I carry the bags. I take one duffel bag. I'm walking down. Um, it's pouring outside. Um, I put it in the car. The fans are screaming, Cleo, can we get a picture? Cleo, can we get a picture? As I'm struggling with a bag. And it's, like, very embarrassing. It's, like, very embarrassing. Like, never do fans want to take a picture with me while I'm, like, carrying big-ass bags looking like thou. Um, I had to make a second trip for the suitcase. I made the second trip for the suitcase. Do it again. Raining outside. Dragging the suitcase. Fans in my face. It was so fucking humiliating. I was like, what the fuck? I get in the car, I'm tight. Like, I'm fake drenched and I'm tight. Like, and the car ride is silence. And I know she peeped why I was mad. It's like she just doesn't give a fuck. So we went to the hotel now. When we pull up to the hotel, she's like, oh, like, um, telling the security guy what bag she wants taking out the car because we was about to go to the hotel so she could take a shower. But it's like, I perform too. I, I want to take a shower too. So I'm just like, you the only one that's taking a shower. I want to take a shower too. She's like, oh, you got to tell him what bags to take out or he's not going to take it. And I'm just thinking to myself, didn't I just tell this guy to bring my bags to the car? And he said no. So why would I think that he's going to take my bags out because I said so? You know, it's like she just didn't want to speak for me at all. She just wanted to show that you're here alone, bitch. Like, I'm just like, wow. So I come out the car and I'm just telling the bellman because at least there's a bellman here and what bags to take out because I'm going to take a shower too. So we go upstairs and it's like after the show kind of gets like a rush vibes because we're trying to like hurry up and get back on the um, bus. 
So we're in the hotel room and I have this feeling in my chest. I don't know if anybody else who's a real ass gets this feeling. And it's just a feeling and I'm just like, I have to say something because if I don't say something, I'm gonna start moving like I don't like her. So I wanna at least say how I feel, get her take on it instead of being angry and just letting it build up frustration in me. So she's in the shower and I'm like about to take my makeup off so that we can like, you know, I'm not waiting for her to get out the shower to take my makeup off and it's just delaying us because we're trying to hurry up. So I'm, I went to the bathroom, I'm taking my makeup off and I'm like, yo, you know you asked me to like take my bath, I mean, not you asked me, I'm like, yo, you know you told me to take my bags with me to the venue. You said that was, a, it was smart for me to take my bags and the reason why. And you even told me to tell your security to bring the bags upstairs. So why would it be a problem for him to bring the bags back to the car? And she goes, that's my security. He works for me. If he feels like he's going to, if he feels like he's doing more work, he's going to want to get paid more. So I'm like, how much is he wanna, does he want to get paid more? Because if I'm going to be with her this whole tour, I would pay him more. I will pay him more to carry my bags. I don't want to be carrying my bags. I don't. Like, y'all seen all the fans seeing me carry my bags? That was crazy to me. So I'm like, all right, we got to figure this out. So, like, how much you want to get paid more? He's like, he gets paid a flat rate. I'm like, is this girl serious? She said it like she had no idea what flat rate meant. If he gets paid a flat rate, that means that he'll move a house for you. He's getting paid to work for you. He got paid to work for you. He'll, he's moving anything you tell him to move. He's, mo he's moving anything that you tell him to move. So I'm like, girl, I was carrying them bags out. Like, the fans was all in my face. She started she start making it seem like she understand, like, oh, yeah, that's crazy, da-da-da. But then she goes back to being weird and she's just like he can't leave my side like he can't leave me that's why like girl what you mean he can't leave you so now i catch her again like just like she's just weird i'm just like what you mean he can't leave you we was up there waiting for him to bring all your bags he left you several times to bring your bags to the car he left you a lot of times already she's like oh why would i wait for him to bring your bags to the car I'm like, the conversation was done after that. It was done. I said, okay, I know the type of girl that I'm dealing with. She's very selfish. Why would, we just waited for him to bring your bags. What you mean, why would we wait for my bags now? Like, girl, what? I got out the bathroom. That was the end of it. I didn't bring up that situation no more. I charged it to the game. And charging something to the game is normally something you do regarding business. But I thought that this girl was my friend. So I'm like, why would I have to charge something to the game in this situation? Like, this is my, this is supposed to be my friend. But gradually I start seeing that she wasn't really my friend. And that was like the, the, the beginning of it. Now, what I didn't know, which I later learned after bringing up everything I went through to her, I learned that. This situation where I said something about my bags was the reason why I got mistreated the entire tour after that. And I had no idea that she was so tight at me for, for saying something. Because she's the type of person who doesn't like to be set. She doesn't want anything said to her. She feels too big. She feels too highly. Oh, her, she's on her, her high horse. Nobody can say nothing to her. But that's the type of person I wouldn't want as a friend. Like, I don't want a friend that I can't tell about themselves. Like, I can't tell you about yourself because you're famous. Like, that's sick. It doesn't matter how famous you are. We're still all human beings at the end of the day. And you still could get checked and you still could get told about yourself. Whatever, though. So, we went to the next places. Got back to New York. Um, the New York show was like, I was so, like indecisive if I wanted to continue the tour because the bag situation and I'm just like oh because I'm not gonna have anybody but me and my managers was working on um getting somebody like some assistant <sighs> anyways so of course this story is long as because it was 30 days of hell <laughs> um so yeah the New York show I was real indecisive about like continuing the tour but I have this drive in me where I feel like God wouldn't put me in a situation that I cannot handle. And I felt like he put me in this situation. 
he gave me this situation and if I couldn't handle it, he wouldn't have. So any way that anybody is about to treat me, I will overcome it. I'm going to overcome everything. You are not going to trick me out of my spot. You are not going to make me feel like I'm not supposed to be here. I am moving by the grace of God. And that's just that. I don't care. I don't care. And from that moment forward, I said, I'm not even going to speak on anything that makes me feel uncomfortable or makes me feel unwelcomed. But at the end of this, I'm going to say how I feel. I am going to say how I feel because right now in this moment, I feel like I'm, I'm with, I'm on tour with somebody that don't even fuck with me for real. That's not even really my friend. The New York tour, her dressing room was kind of small. I never have a dressing room. You know, what was kind of weird that she said that I was going to be with her the whole time. Like I was going to be with her. You're going to be with me. You're good. And when I would come inside the venue, her whole tour production team, they would act like they have no idea where I'm supposed to go. Like, did she not tell you guys that I'm supposed to be in her room? They're just like, oh, we don't have a room for you. But here, they'll give me like, they'll give me like a um a bathroom. <laughs> the bathroom that everybody's using. They'll give me the bathroom and say, well, you can get dressed inside this bathroom right here. And I'm just like, um, I'm supposed to be in her room though. Like, I'm confused. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, it was just confusing. So they would like show me bathrooms and little corners that I can get ready in. And I'm just like, what? But need I remind you, every time there was a special guest or somebody that ICE wanted to bring out, they was always accommodated. Somehow they was always able to find a room and they always had a room for themselves I never had a room and I was okay with that because I already came on tour knowing that I was gonna be with her but it annoyed me when they would act like they had no idea where I was supposed to be at that was confusing to me so the dressing room is small and I asked her like oh can I get ready inside your room she's like um come and see the room I come and see the room and the room is large enough for us to get ready in it <sighs> like bro you invited me on tour bro we supposed to be trying to thug it out and make it work because we're friends and we're girls like hello so we're getting our makeup done our chairs are like just back to back but the room is not it's not like there's a couch her wardrobe is able to fit in there, which is a big ass wardrobe. All her stuff is able to fit in it. She's good. She's good. And I'm good too. I get for her space. After I'm done dressing up, I get out the room. I do not sit around in the room and shit because she don't even allow niggas to sit in the room. She just give niggas the boot like anytime she feel like it, which was kind of like weird too. Cause like, girl, why I can't just sit in the room and chill? Like, uh, whatever. So, um, oh yeah, I forgot. That's because she was tight ever since the Philly show when I said something about the luggage. That is why everything was weird afterwards. Now I put my bag, literally a tote, on the side of her couch and she knows it's mine because she knows that's my bag. I put it on the side of the couch. Um, her mom and her little sister came in the room. So everybody got out the room, da 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 da. Um, like an hour goes by, I like go downstairs I walk past the room, I see my bag, like my Telfar bag outside of her door. And I'm just like, wait, why would they kick this little bag out? Like this little bag was on the side of the couch. Like why would it need to be kicked out the room? What is crazy now, a few days later, and I'm not accusing anybody of nothing. It could have been anybody, you know what I'm saying? It could have been somebody that walked past the door and seen a bag in the front of ICE door. My card was used. 700 and something dollars was used at a, one of those designer retail websites like Essence or something. I was so gagged. I was just like, what? But of course, call my bank, got my money back. I didn't even make it a thing. I didn't even make it a thing. But <laughs> imagine somebody that only has seven some, 700 and something dollars in the account. And like, yo, and just imagine how other people could react to that. Like, they would be so fucking gagged, bro. I'm just like, whatever. You know, that's crazy. Because why would you kick my bag out? But like I said, I'm not even going to say nothing. She's probably going to argue with me. She's probably going to something, something. 
Now, I stayed in New York a couple of days um, to work on my video shoot. When I came back, everything changed. So she told me to take a bunk on her bus because Riot was coming to the back. Riot's coming, so take a bunk on the bus. I was like, okay, girl, I'm not going to cock block. You want to be with your man? Cool, granted. That's what she told me, though. So I'm thinking when you're done, this is like a, a who knows? The bus ride is mad long. I'm thinking we're going to go back to the hotel when we get to where we going, like we're gonna be in the same hotel. So when she got when when she got out the back room on the bus, we came out together. It was her, Riot, me, and the security were walking towards the elevator. We go inside the elevator. And this is something that she could have texted me because she texted me when she said that he was coming on the bus and for me to take a bunk on the bus. So she goes in the elevator, you're not gonna get your own room. I was like, what? I didn't know I was getting my own room. I was mad confused. I'm like, oh, that's what I was trying to understand. And I stopped the elevator door from opening. Girl, why you can't say nothing to nobody? Like, why when you why do you always try to get why do you always try to give like an embarrassment kind of vibe? Like it's not even embarrassing, but it's like that's the vibe that you that you make it seem like you try to give all the time. Like, girl, you could have texted me that. Cleo, make sure you get your own room. This is the hotel we staying at. Like, damn, why we gotta get to the whole the, the hotel and you telling me you're not gonna get your own room? Like, I could have had the room booked already before we got here boo but on top of that i didn't even know that i was paying for hotel rooms because they're staying at five five star hotel rooms every place her labels covering everything label 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 everything's covered you know what i'm saying i'm an independent artist why would i come on this tour knowing that i had one day to prepare now i'm gonna have to pay for five star hotels in every city this is not something that I signed up for. This is not something that I was prepared for. This is not something that I told my label about. Maybe they could have, not even maybe, they would have helped me. They would have helped me. But you gave me one single day to, to prepare for a tour that you knew about months ago. That's so crazy to me. But we know why now. We know now that you added me to the tour simply because you wanted to damage control. The situation with Baby Stormy was making you look crazy. You thought to yourself, and this is things that I realized after the fact. I told y'all, I already thought that she was trying to make it up. But it wasn't a makeup matter. It was her trying to clean up everything that was going on with her. And let's add Cleo to the tour. So people think that I'm a good friend. So people think that I, I give opportunities to, to her and I'm nice and I, I'm good. Mm -mm. Her hairstylist end up saying like, you know, you should stay, stay. You, you got your fans coming out. You already promoted it yourself. Like your fans is coming to see you do it for your fans. She put that battery in my back to really like, I had to put, get my head back on a swivel. Like, yo, like make this situation what you can make it. And just ignore everything else. And at the end of this, you will address her and you will tell her how this situation made, made you feel. And if she doesn't care, that was never your friend. Some people don't even know what and like they don't know how they're making you feel until you tell them. But if she doesn't care, she was never your friend. So I end up staying with the hairstylist. She let me stay inside her hotel room. Every city that we went to, we st I stayed with her and she was mad nice. And it just, it was so fun with her. Like it really just gave like, it was just fun. Like it felt, it felt like how it was supposed to be with Ice, but she's fucking boring. Like she's boring. She doesn't want to do anything. She doesn't even want to play Uno. Like I don't, like she doesn't even want to do anything. The bus rides be bad, boring. It just be boring. So like being with her hairstylist really showed me like the fun side of the tour. And she even said to herself like, yeah, you made this tour so like, easy going like you just made it fun and i'm glad that she felt that way because she made that for me too and thank you girl now moving forward this is when it starts to really feel like mistreatment and just weird stuff so the hairstylist shows me like a menu and stuff she's like oh production and whatever they're gonna order food for everybody pick what you want i was like okay i'll get the chicken salad just like you like i'll just get a chicken salad then she shows me like a message where somebody from production is like cleo is not a part of the budget so i'm just like how am i not a part of the budget but y'all invited me on tour like who and why and why didn't they tell you that make sure Cleo's good? Make sure Cleo's good. Cleo is a part of the budget. Make sure Cleo's good. The same way you told me that I was going to be good. Why is your production saying that I'm not a part of the budget for a chicken salad? Chicken salad? I'm not a part of the budget for a chicken salad? 
Y'all could have bought that chicken salad and literally got the money from my manager or me. But y'all wanted to show me so bad that I can't get nothing and that nobody is here for me that I couldn't even get a chicken salad. I gagged. I was like, wow, this shit is corny. I ain't saying nothing. No, remember I said I wasn't saying anything about anything. I was just going to take everything in and whatever. So my manager ends up getting me an assistant to come on tour with me, somebody to help. They met me in Chicago. So now the Chicago show was lit as f It was so fun. Um, I love Chicago. But yeah, she came, she helped me, whatever. And the only reason why she even came in the first place was because she was told that she was going to be able to go on Riot's bus. And then at the end of the show, she was told that Riot said you can't come on his bus. And she was just so confused because that's the reason why she came all the way to Chicago in the first place. And Riot is not even on his own bus. He's on the bus with Ice. So it was just so, it was just so mind boggling, you know? And he probably didn't even say that. They probably just didn't even want me to have anybody. And that was the vibe that I was starting to get that they actually do want me to struggle. They want me to struggle a little bit. They want to see if I'm gonna if I'm gonna stay. They want to, it's like they it's like they want to put this pressure on me. And let me tell you, the devil will not win, boo. He will not win. He will not win. He will not win. He was starting to get to me, but he didn't win. Sent her all the way back to New York. And I was left again with nobody. I got a little piece of help, and then I was done for. Now we're in Texas. We're in between Texas and Mexico. What do you guys think of when y'all think Texas? The the b between Texas and Mexico. Desert. Desert. Tumbleweeds. Nothing for miles. No Uber Eats. No Uber to Eats. And there's nothing. We're at a Best Western or whatever one of those hotels are. We're in the middle of nowhere. That's how you know, because we're at one of those Best Western hotels. And um yeah, no food. There's a McDonald's all the way down the block, eight minute walk, probably gonna get bit by scorpions and all sorts of other bugs while walking through the desert to McDonald's. So me and her and stylist, we're in the hotel. We just sleeping and stuff. It's like two o'clock. We get up around like five or six. I call Ice. I'm getting ready and shit. Me and her, me and her his stylist is about to make videos or whatever. I call, I'm like, oh, let's make TikToks. She's like, um, like with that soulless demon face just um you're with my hairstylist so like damn my bad it was really seeming like she didn't really want me to be friends with her hairstylist but it's like damn bitch i don't got no friends so i'm gonna make friends with bitches that actually want to be my friend i'm sorry i hung up on her after that because it was just like ew like all right i'm with your hairstylist so what that mean like oh like i can't like i'm not ready obviously like it was just the attitude around it that was just so weird and corny to me i'm just like okay whatever went downstairs and i seen her in the lobby and her and some other boy one of his friends is just standing there you know with a basketball i'm like oh what y'all just did oh we were playing basketball whatever whatever nobody said anything about eating nobody i'm like we me me and the hairstyles keep talking about food we like oh damn we mad hungry like we mad hungry just a mcdonald's or nobody said anything about food while me and her are talking about how hungry we are now we go to the boys bus tour bus and we just sitting on the bus we just like yo like can somebody come with us to mcdonald's like nobody want to walk there by themselves we, we take one of men with us they like oh that's mad for like nah like where there's a desert it's scary I don't know. i'm like okay Nobody said anything about food still. Come to find out, everybody ate. <laughs> Can you believe that? Everybody ate. Guess what? They all went to a steakhouse. Everybody went to a steakhouse and left me, the hairstylist, and the makeup artist. Everybody went to go get a bite, steak, mash, cream corn, spinach. And we didn't have anything. We didn't eat at all. We're trying to figure out how to get a McDonald's. And y'all all ate already? Nobody mentioned it. You know why nobody mentioned it? Because it was a secret. It was a secret. And I gagged. One of the things that I have to charge to the game, I guess. I'm like, what? They said, don't say anything. We don't want to make it a problem. All right, I'm not going to say anything. One of the things I'm just going to have to bring up when I'm ready to leave. And that's another thing that I later realized when I reflected on everything that this girl was really mad at me for saying something about that luggage, bro. 
she was so mad at me for saying something like she don't want nobody say nothing to her like she she tried to low-key torture me like she was trying to low-key do it like she wasn't trying to do it too much but she was trying to still like show me like yeah and I'm just like I didn't think I didn't even know that until I brought all of this up to her and she showed me that she didn't give a f girl f you I was like oh my god just went on tour with somebody that hates my guts wow so for you guys that don't know how a tour bus looks, it looks like a slave ship. Very similar to a slave ship. Three bunks stacked up on top of each other very tightly on each side. Um, some may have more, but this bus that we was on had three. And then she has her big room in the back, which I was staying at for the first couple of days until I blew things by saying something about my bag. <laughs> As an artist, why the hell would I want to leave the venue carrying my bags? We'll never know why she wanted me to look so crazy. We'll never know. Actually, we do know. But yeah. So that's how the bus looks. And while we were in New Orleans, there was another situation where we was on the bus from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Me and the makeup artist, me and the hairstylist, well, all of us, we were told to get on the bus because at this point, Ice doesn't even communicate with me anymore, by the way. She, like, slowly, gradually stopped talking to me, and that's because I think, like, she realized that I was, like, like getting cool with the people that worked for her, so now it's like she's kind of, like, treating me like a worker. But mm, I was so confused. Like, you're not being my friend, so I'm going to make more friends like girl it's like she wanted me to be miserable and alone and it just didn't happen because that's not what god had planned for me boo so they was told to get on the bus at nine and nobody tells me anything so i'm just doing what they said you know i don't get no text messages like i said i don't i don't she doesn't tell me nothing so i get on the bus at 9 a.m because that's what her manager told them her manager doesn't even text me that's how much I don't get anything told to me. So she was literally the one that was supposed to be talking to me. So I get on the bus at nine, um, wake up at two, and we're in the same place. So you can think about it. We're on a slave ship, right? From nine to 2 p.m. in the same place, thinking that we're moving and that by the time we wake up, we won't even be there anymore. So to find out we're in the same place is so crazy. My legs are cramping now. Like, I'm just so confused. Like, niggas is treating us like fucking luggage for real. Like, yeah, let's just throw the luggage on the bus. Like, girl, what? We're humans. Can you tell us that you're not leaving right now? When some somebody asks, like, why didn't we leave yet? Because Ice didn't feel like leaving yet. And I'm just like, bro, this is so crazy. I texted her. I was like, hey, are you okay? She's like, yeah, I'm on the way. I'm like, bro, what? You could have been told niggas not to get on the bus because you don't, you're not leaving yet. Y'all go and do something. Y'all walk around or look around and just travel around, or whatever, because we're not leaving yet. But instead, you let us sit up in that in that tour bus for that long, girl. And you didn't even give a f when I told you about any of this. And that shit is what really hurts the most, how much she didn't get. So I'm actually glad that I didn't say anything during the tour. Let me tell y'all something. The type of person that I am, bro... If I say how I feel, which is this is how the situation in Philly made me feel, and I see that you don't give a that starts to turn me. So I didn't want to be turned so bad that I spaz on her. I spaz on her. I swing on her. I'm locked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even want that to come out of this at all. Because the way she goes back and forth and the way she's ready to argue, that's somebody that knows that they got people behind her. Because that mouth would not be running like that two years ago. I'll tell you that much. I was going to leave after we was left in the desert and they went to the steakhouse behind our backs. I was going to leave after that. But I'm like, you know what? Let me do the Dallas and Houston show. Let me bring my girl Asian out. Let me make the best out of this situation once again. And that was going to be it. My mom, who didn't, she wasn't able to make it to the New York show. She comes to Atlanta. She's like how she's coming to Atlanta because it was my aunt's 70th, 70th birthday and she wanted to see me. So I'm like, damn, I got to do the Atlanta show just for her. <laughs> Love you, mommy. Now we're going to get into the dispute that ended everything. So I addressed everything to her. I should actually show 
how I addressed it. Because although it was very long, I want you guys to also keep in mind how so close friendships and relationships feel. Like the breakup feels the same. The way you express yourself, it can kind of feel the same as like, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it is very similar. So when I was explaining everything that I went through, it was a long ass paragraph. And like I was talking to my nigga, like I was breaking everything down because I want you to know exactly how I feel and how it made me feel. Exactly what I went through and how it made me feel. I want you to understand it. And I also want you to put yourself in my shoes and ask yourself if you would even go through that. You know what I'm saying? Because people fail to realize that she skipped a, a, a very important part in her career, which was the grind. She barely had to do that. She barely had to do that. And that's okay. Some people are lucky. Some people are lucky. And we're going to call it luck. We're not going to call it her being blessed because I don't think the Lord will bless somebody like her. Her soul is, it doesn't belong to the person above. She is very dark and very soulless. And I've never been around this girl for more than 10 hours. Anytime I hung out with her, it was something very small, a small gathering, a small event. It was um, video shoots, you know what I'm saying? It never was chilling in the crib. Face not done, chilling. You get what I'm saying? Like, on some real friend shit. That's why I, I kind of got annoyed when a lot of people thought he was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, oh, but it was like, we were still cool. Like, that was still my girl, bro. So, it was just her her energy. I got to witness this very first hand. I was around her every day, 24-7. I mean... Not all the time, cause she would go straight to the back into that into that room, and she and when I would see her, like um at the venue and whatever, because after the Philly situation, I barely saw her. She was dark. She just oh my god, like it's even scary to talk about. Like bro, that girl, she needs to be saved. Like I don't know if she was always like that. This Hollywood, but Hollywood never changed me. Like, Hollywood never changed me. But Nikki was very, very correct when she said, ain't no friends in the game. Ain't no friends in the game. But me thinking like, oh, like, I was cool with Ice, like, before all of this, da 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 I didn't think, like, she was going to be a weirdo over time. Like, that shit was crazy. So when I told her about everything... She literally turned around. Like, when I say everything, I told her everything. I'm going to put it in the screenshot. Honestly, it felt like it could have been a miscommunication here. She winds up telling me that my that she told her manager, basically, after the Philly situation, she told her manager to tell my manager that I'm going to need to get my own room. What I was confused on is that I told you how I felt in Philly, but you couldn't tell me how you felt in Philly. And that was and that's why we weren't really friends. That that's how I realized that we weren't really friends cuz you can't even speak up to me. But had the audacity to say that I didn't say any of those stuff to you because I'm scared of you. Why would I be scared of you? I didn't want to punch you. I didn't want me, I didn't want to say all those stuff above and then you completely ignore it because that's what you did when I mentioned the stuff that happened in Philly. You ignored it. Like, you did not care. So, with that being said, if I was to explain everything like how I explained it, you would literally not care at all. So, it's not even about not... It's not even about being scared to say it to her it's about being scared to see your reaction in person like your reaction would have led to something something bad something bad and i wouldn't even have been able to say everything that i just said you would have cut me off you would have cut me off but the fact that i said so much and all you had to say was that somebody was ungrateful you just wanted all of this to be a reason to call somebody ungrateful you wanted all of this so that 
when something was to happen or you was to mistreat me, it was like, girl, look at all I did for you. You mad ungrateful. Like, girl, just because you gave somebody an opportunity doesn't mean you have to treat them like shit. And I could tell that everything that was happening with management or production, that was all from your mouth is what I'm now coming to understand, that you was the one behind the scenes making sure that Cleo don't get no chicken salad or um, make sure she don't get no room, make sure Cleo not in my room. Like, but how are you going to tell me I'm going to be with you? That doesn't make any sense. So you, if you were so mad about the bag situation in Philly, why didn't you just straight up tell me, bro, this tour shit is not going to work out? That's what you should have just said. That's what you should have just said. But since you didn't say that, and I just got a, like, a hint of just weirdness, I took a step back and just made the opportunity what I could make it. But it wasn't genuine at all. Nothing that you do is genuine. Everything is calculated. Like I said, I was the token black friend. You didn't have your other best friend around because you said that she didn't match your aesthetic. Like, there's something very wrong with somebody that is only friends with somebody for their aesthetic. I don't know what's wrong with you, but I should have never let you take my swag. I should have never even gave you a piece of it. Because Lord knows that you was wearing bodysuits and Jordans when you first came out. Now, all of a sudden, it's mini skirts, it's little dresses, and big chunky boots. Like, girl, that's me. And I let you have it. Because I thought we was friends, but boo, you gonna have to get it back and figure something out now. Because I don't like what I, I did not like that at all. But you know what? I'm initially going to do charge it to the game and let everybody know what type of human being you are. Because it's not even like what type of girl you are. What type, what type of human being you are? You're not a girl's girl. You're not for the girls at all. You're not. That's why you barely have any friends, and that's why you most definitely don't have any black friends. Never seen any black girl around her. And the black friend that you did have exposed you. But I'm doing this shit a little, a little differently because I want people to actually feel it. I want people to actually feel it. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all can still support her and y'all can still love her down. Y'all could do everything. But let me tell y'all what y'all not going to do. Don't disrespect me behind her. Don't disrespect me behind her because I was nothing but a good friend to her. I'm telling you, bro, y'all didn't even like the way how y'all didn't even like the way this how this girl dressed when she first came out. Come on, Y2K? I had a Y2K party in 2021 that I didn't even know Ice in 2021. She told me when we first, oh, let's talk about the first time we met. Because it's really gaggy to me that all of a sudden I'm the bum and I'm careerless. When we first met, you told me that it was a full circle moment. How can I turn into a careerless bum because of a hotel room that you didn't tell me that I was going to pay for? That's my fucking money. That's my money. If I want to use what I use my money for is what I want to use my money for. And there's plenty of it. It's plenty of it, girl. It's plenty of it. So I wish I should come out of pocket thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for somebody that's not even trying to promote me being on her tour. The only thing you wanted to promote was that you was giving somebody an opportunity. Like, oh yeah, Cleo posted it so everybody knows that, da da da. Like, bro, you did not want to shine any sort of light on me. And when you shined a light, you dimmed it and you made sure you dimmed it down. You dimmed it down. And you made sure those speakers on that stage was not even loud. You made sure of it every time, every time. And it was such a learning experience, bro. Nobody had any idea what I was going through before I even got on that stage. And even when I got off that stage, it's like we couldn't, it's like I couldn't even go into her room when I was done performing. When I was done performing, I had nowhere to go. Because when I come to the room, it's, oh, I don't want nobody in her room right now. Like, damn, bro. It's like she treating niggas like they her fans. Like, I thought we was, I thought we was sissies. Like, what's going on? Why niggas can't go inside your room? I know what's going on. You want to exercise your power. You want to show that this is your shit. You run this shit. This is your show. I understood that already when I came on to it. And I understood that. But you wanted to make me feel that, like, that's the sick part about everything. That you wanted to make me feel less than. You didn't even want, you didn't even tell anybody on that tour. I bet you you didn't. Make sure Cleo's good. Make sure anything Cleo wants she get. Or make sure Cleo's good. Make sure Cleo's good. I didn't even get that vibe. And when I spoke out on it, I got called a careerless bum. I'm never going to be anything. Da -da 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 -da. I'm a bum. I'm a bum. I'm crying about a hotel room. 
Like, bro, is that the only thing that I spoke about in, in the paragraph, bro, that I wrote you? Is that the only thing that I spoke about in these videos? So the fact that you would even think that that's what all of this is about just goes to show how much of a corny individual you are. And you couldn't wait for the opportunity to try to call me a bum. You couldn't wait to try to speak down on me, to speak down on me, somebody that you looked up to, somebody that you was watching since high school. You told me it was a full circle moment meeting me, bro. Meeting me, being being in the same car as me. Like, you could not believe it. You were so gagged. But now your head is so big, you don't even know where you came from. Aren't you from the gutter? Aren't you a Bronx bitch from the gutter, bro? Aren't you from the gutter, bro? So the audacity for somebody that said that they was in the mall looking for a job. Jobs anywhere. They was about to crash out. They needed a job ASAP before you blew up. And you're going to go and try to call somebody a bum? I always had bread, and not because I'm some scammer or da-da-da. I always been a go-getter. I'm Nigerian. I'm the real Nigerian. I come from money. You see that green and that white? That's what I come from. I come from money, bro, because I have a hustler mentality. I never been in a pickle where I'm like, oh, how am I going to get bread? How am I going to you was in a pickle before Drake reposted your, vi your video. That's how you went crazy. That's how you went viral. You was in a pickle, bro. You was in a pickle. I will never talk down on any of my friends. There's so many of my friends that I make more money than. I would never, ever say nothing like that. Because I'm comfortable at the end of the day. I got my 2023 car. I got a nice-ass crib. I pay like three bands for. Every month, I'm good. I got to be making some sort of bread to be paying that kind of rent. Like, let's be for real. Let's be for real. To try to belittle me because I'm just trying to tell you how your tour made me feel is so, it was all calculated. It was all calculated. It was all calculated. It was never genuine and you just could not wait to talk to me like that. I called her on the phone after that conversation because I really wanted to know, is this girl, is this really her? I was so gagged. I'm like, is this really her? She got on the phone like, what? Look how you talking to me. You're not even talking to me like you like you was my friend. Like, and I didn't record that conversation. I don't do shit like that. Look how you talking to me like you was never even my friend, bro. She's just like, bro, this is why you're never gonna be anywhere. This is why you're never gonna get nowhere. Blah, blah, blah. Mind you, compare me from 2018 to now. Because I started making videos in 2018. If I was a careerless bum, why would you even bring me on tour? Why would you even tell me to come out with you a day after I met you to come on streaming? To come on Kai and I stream? Why would you even do that? Why would you even do that? Exactly, bro. It's just that now you feel like since you up, let me talk down on her. Let me make her feel like shit. Cause you already made, you was already doing that behind the scenes. But now I got you in 4K trying to treat me like I'm less than. It's so hilarious to me. It's so hilarious to me. Ask me how, ask me how far I think you're gonna get with that personality, which is you don't have one with the way you act with the way you move you are a soulless individual you are really demonic you have a very demonic vibe to you especially with the way i was seeing you every day the way you mope around and you just like if your makeup artist is not bringing that wing and making it pick up your eye you are dead you really look dead you really look dead and i'm gonna keep it a being with you